Church, say amen. amen. Church, say amen again. Amen. God is good. And all the time, God is. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. And if you don't know, you better ask somebody. Amen. 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 I wanted to say something else, but uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Some of y'all laughing. Y'all heard Biggie lyrics. And if you don't know... Now you know. And that's what we're going to say right there. <laughs> God is good. Amen. God is certainly wonderful. Blessed us to be here this morning. Uh, just God is certainly in the blessing business. Even through, even through uh, pain, we, we learn that we can thank God. Amen. Even through tough times, we know that we can thank God, that we can praise God because of who he is. Uh, certainly he's worthy to be praised there's a there's a song that goes i know you you know it but it, it goes like a, a, if he doesn't do anything else he's already done enough amen he's done so much lord jesus we just got a reason to praise his name amen Amen, amen again. Well, it is it is certainly good to be standing here before you. Normally, I can't wait till Sunday morning, and it seemed like it's quick from Sunday to Wednesday, and from Wednesday to Sunday, but it seemed like it took forever to get to Wednesday, and even longer to get to Sunday. So so I, I, I said to myself, like, I ain't preached in the, at the church in like three years. I mean, it felt like that. Uh, but it's, it's, it's good to be here, amen? It, it's, it's good to be where the blessings are. Yeah, 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 I ain't heard. It's good to be in a place and in a position that, that, that we know there's a blessing from the Lord. Amen? From his word, and so we praise him for who he is and for what he does. Uh, just thankful for everybody who participated in yesterday's activity. Saturday was turned up. Saturday was a blessing indeed. Is that better? I'm sorry. Um, but... Uh, <laughs> But our, our men's class was excellent. Our, our women's class was excellent. Uh, the nursing home singing was excellent. The fellowship in between was, was excellent. I can tell y'all something. Sometimes you can fellowship so hard, you late for the next event. <laughs> uh, we was late to the nursing home because we had such a good time in here. We was like, yeah, what time is it? It's 10 till. We took off to get there, but, but, but had a blessed time there and just just... It's always a good time when the saints of God get together. Amen? Amen, amen, amen again. Just a reminder, today's activities at 2.15 p.m. We're going to have a quick, I can't say quick meeting, but we're going to have a meeting for uh, song leader training. Amen? Amen at 2.15 today. Just want to remind, I'm going to say the announcements, but just as a reminder as well. Thankful and appreciate all of our visitors. Amen? It's good to see Sister Ursula in the building once more. She ain't think I was going to put her on the spot, but it's good. Y'all give her a round of applause, amen. It's good to see her here again. Amen. And she's suffering with what most of us suffer with, them allergies. Lord Jesus, I promise you this ain't going to be a long sermon. Why you laugh like that, Kathy? <laughs> amen, amen, amen again, amen. If you have your Bibles, if you would turn to the book of Exodus, and we'll start at chapter... Three. We're going to reference the entire entirety of the scripture that was read to your hearing. Um, but what I'm going to reread is Exodus chapter 3, verses 10 through 14, which was a part of that scripture reading. But we'll walk through the, the entirety of the whole thing. But ex Exodus chapter 3, verses 10 through 14, I'll be reading from the New American Standard Bible. It is also noted on the screen uh, right there. Uh, Exodus chapter 3, verses 10 through 14. Amen, son. Where well, the Bible says, Therefore, come now, and I will send you to Pharaoh, so that you may bring my people, the sons of Israel, out of Egypt. But Moses said to God, Who am I that I should go to Pharaoh? And that I should bring the sons of Israel out of Egypt. But he said, certainly I will be with you. And this shall be the sign to you that it is I who have sent you. 
when you have brought the people out of Egypt, you shall worship God at this mountain. Verse 12 is a sermon all by itself. Then Moses said to God, Behold, I'm going to send you to the sons of Israel, and I will say to them, The God of your fathers has sent me to you. Now they may say to me, What is his name? What shall I say to them? God said to Moses, I am who I am. And he said, thus you shall say to the sons of Israel, I am has sent me to you. And all God's children said, amen. Have you ever been lost and had to ask a stranger for direction? Meaning you were heading somewhere, the directions that you had didn't make any kind of sense. Sometimes the GPS lies. And so you had to ask somebody on the street or ask somebody in a gas station, that's real old school, but ask somebody in a gas station for directions. And, and here's the truth. If someone gives you directions but they seem shady, you might not trust them. For some reason, it comes back to my mind. I don't know why. I, like, it's, it's the Lord working. But I remember that, 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 that Brian Murray, Wyman Fisher, Ken Spence, Aaron Spence, Ron Potter, Rand Goodson, we all hopped in Brother Edwards, his uncle's car. And we're driving up to the Northeastern Youth Conference that Friday to go play basketball. They ain't even put me in the game, but that ain't important. But we drove up there to go play basketball. And, and we, we got right into Newark, and then the directions stopped making sense. That's when you had to print them out. And you had to read, yeah, yeah, you know what I'm saying? That, that means that the person in the pastures, he had to stay awake the whole time, amen? I'm, I'm going back sometime. But, 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 but we, we read, and when we got right there, we like, where in the world is Martin Luther King junior high school now nah, this don't make sense so what we did was we pulled up I don't know if you remember we pulled up we asked somebody on the side was like hey do you have directions and she looked at us and she looked at who was in the car and then was like yeah if you go down this road make that right and then uh, you're going to see a little alley and then it's going to lead right to the school we took like five feet forward and it might have been Ron who said uh bruh Another Ron. Ron said, uh, bruh, them directions seem like she's sending us to the ducky spot. Let's turn this thing around and figure the good sense said that ain't where we need to go. When we turned around, wouldn't you believe we kept going? We found out where the school was, where the church was having the basketball game. We're like, ain't this something? Wonder what would happen if we went, hmm. Better judgment is what we sometimes would call it. We in a situation, we say, well, I use my better judgment uh -huh. better judgment has helped us in many many ways sometimes it helped us out of a jam amen sometimes it protected us from a bad situation sometimes it just helps us to get ahead you see our better judgment comes from our personal experience things we've experienced in life will let us know red flag hold up don't go there don't talk to that person don't y'all follow what I'm saying but it's our experiences that inform what we call our better judgment. But have you ever realized that sometimes your better judgment, quote unquote, better judgment, might be keeping you from something? Huh. Here in the text, we see an interaction between Moses and God that teaches us something about our better judgment if we are willing to learn. Isn't that? If you would lend me your heart and ears to this thought. When trust meets excuses. When trust meets excuses. You know, the truth is that, that, that there are times we, 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 we might say we trust God. Amen? We might scream from mountaintop, we trust God. But then certain things happen in life and you got to figure out if you're going to make an excuse or if you're going to trust God. Amen? I can't believe it's April already. Almost the end of April. We have, we done studied a lot this year thus far in the, in the sermon series that we've had. 
um, a few things that have very much related to our annual theme. Our theme this year is getting back to holiness. In the past five weeks, we've spoken about offering and seeing the heart connection, the reverence connected with offering as well. For the next few weeks, we move into a series dealing with trusting God's lead or trusting God's leadership. Amen. It's easy to say that we trust God. But what we're going to do is ask ourselves in detail, do we really trust God to lead us? Amen. Our purpose then and our focus this morning is the following. To learn to get rid of our hangups so that we follow God's lead. Our focus this morning is to learn and get rid of our hang-ups. Amen. So that we follow God's lead. Here in the scripture reading, this scripture focus that we've, we've kind of carved out here, uh, Israel or Moses is in conversation with the Lord. Uh, up until this point, the, the, the way that this thing would break down is that uh, Israel, uh, toward the end of Genesis, Joseph is the second in command and, and w is a whole lot there, but Joseph uh, is second in command of all of Egypt and, and there's a famine in the land and his father and his brothers, Israel, his, his sons, which all together end up being the 12 tribes of Israel, they come into uh, Egypt for protection. Seventy went. Seventy souls, the scripture would say, went into Egypt and they stayed there for generations. And as they were staying there, they lived in peace because Joseph blessed Egypt. God blessed Joseph's hand and, and Egypt was blessed as a result of Joseph being the number two person in all of Egypt. Well, uh, there came up a time that there was a Pharaoh that did not know Joseph. And seeing how the Israelites were so uh, populous or how many people there were around there, they said, uh, look, we need to enslave these people because if we don't, it could be that someone might come waging war against Egypt and these people might say, well, we're going to be on your side so we make it through. So they enslaved the people out of complete fear. Mm -hmm. Enslaved the people out of complete fear. Lord, that's a sermon right there. I ain't even going to lie to you. Fear can make you do some crazy and terrible things, but they enslaved the people out of complete fear. And, and, and Pharaoh said, well, well, heard a prophecy, and Pharaoh said, we have to kill off all of the males, all of the male children. Hmm. Oh, there's a sermon right there, too. Hmm. Yeah, and I'm not going to do it this morning. But, but, but what happened was Moses was born, and what they did was they, his mother took him and put him in a basket, and put him in the river and the river comes near the king or Pharaoh's palace if you will and, and Pharaoh's daughter reaches, sees the basket, reaches, gets the basket out and, and ends up calling the child Moses because he was drawn out of the water. Well Moses is then raised in Egypt for 40 years. Moses is raised in Egypt for 40 years. Moses is raised in Egypt for 40 years. Now, why is that important? Moses is a Hebrew. Moses is not an Egyptian. But Moses is raised in the king's palace as though he's royalty himself. That has to be appreciated. We Hold on to that point. We're going to come back to it. He ends up in trying to protect one of uh, the other Hebrews. He, he ends up killing an Egyptian. And when he thought that this was well known, he flees to Midian where he ends up in Midian as a shepherd for another 40 years. Amen. And then he sees kind of close to where we are. He sees this bush that's on fire, but it's not burning. We call it the burning bush, right? He goes and he sees it and he goes and, and approaches it. And the first thing that God calls Moses and says, take off your shoes for the ground you're standing on is holy. He interacts with God and God tells him, look here. I want you, Moses, to lead my people out of Egypt. Amen. But Moses has a problem. Moses, in his conversation with God, has a problem. And that's where really all of the scripture that we looked at this morning really is at. 
Moses has several problems, and I want to pull them out from the scripture. The first problem is that Moses, when God speaks to him and tells him, you will lead my people. Understand, Lord Jesus, understand Moses' first statement. God says, therefore, I will send you to Pharaoh. You will bring my people, the sons of Israel, out of Egypt. But Moses said to God, who am I? that I should go to Pharaoh and that I should bring the sons of Israel out of Egypt. First thing we see in the text is that Moses doubts who he is. Moses doubts himself. Amen. Verses 10 and 11, Moses doubts himself. The next thing that takes place is that God tells him, look, 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 I'm going to be with you. But, but Moses' statement in verse number 13 is, 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 is but, but behold, I'm going to the sons of Israel and I say to them, the God of your father sent me. Now they'll say, what is his name? Why should we, what shall I say to them? Moses doesn't believe that, the, he doubts that the Israelites will believe that God sent him. Y'all heard? Moses also doubts that Israel will believe in him. Chapter 4, verse 1, Moses said to them, what if they will not believe me or listen to what I say? They may say the Lord has not appeared to you. So Moses has some serious doubts, amen? Matter of fact, the next one is that he, 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 he doubts even his ability to speak. Huh. Moses, now think about this. Moses is talking to a bush that looks like it's on fire, but it's not burning. And he's doubting his ability to speak. How crazy does that sound? But he doubts even his ability to speak. At every point that God said he would send him, when he doubted that, 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 that when he doubted himself, God said, I will be with you. Moses, you ain't in this by yourself. I'm going to be with you. When, when Moses doubted if the Israelites would believe him, he says, look, if, if they want to know who it is, here's the answer. I am that I am sent you. Tell him I am sent you. He, 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 he continued to doubt himself. And when he doubted them believing him in verses 2 through 9 of chapter 4, when Moses, what God does is he explains to him. He shows him a sign. He says, look here, stick your hand in your coat. In your sweater, in your cardigan, I'm using it as an example, and pull it out, it's all leprous. Wait a minute, put it back in, it comes out like it's normal. He showed him a sign, not just one, but he showed him two signs and gave him another one that he would do. All of these things prove it was sign faith. Lord Jesus, we talk about that on Wednesdays, don't we? It's sign faith versus true saving faith. He, he showed, look, here's a sign to show you I am who I said I am. That I'm really going to be with you. But Moses didn't even have sign faith. To believe the sign that God gave him. Well, even so he says, Lord, I can't talk right. <laughs> Lord have mercy. And then God says something. Lord have mercy. God says, who made man's mouth? Didn't I make it? Didn't I make eyes? Look here. I give you the words to speak. Huh. You see the problem though. Here in the text. The problem we have is that it looked like Moses was extremely doubtful of who he was. Amen. Doubtful of himself to the extent that he kept making excuses. But something deeper is taking place right here. The real problem. And if you were to turn there. Acts chapter 7. If you turn there. Acts chapter 7. I'm going to put it up on the screen. But if you turn to Acts chapter 7. You begin to see something. Now, Acts chapter 7 is a story really about Stephen. It really is Stephen's dialogue. In chapter 6, we see Stephen was a man full of the Holy Spirit, one of the deacons at the church at Jerusalem. And here he is. They, they took him up, snatched him up, and they, they seek to put him to death. And so he begins a discourse, and he begins preaching to them. Kind of precisely what we talked about in, in Sunday morning Bible study this morning. He's sharing with them information they already knew to explain some things. And Stephen, full of the Holy Spirit, gives us commentary in Acts chapter 7 that we've not seen in Exodus. In Acts chapter 7, beginning at verse number 20, the Bible says, it was at this time that Moses was born. This is in the middle of the story now. 
and he was lovely in the sight of God and he was nurtured three months in his father's home and after he had been set outside in the river now Pharaoh's daughter took him away out of the river and nurtured him as his own son and Moses was educated in all the learning of the Egyptians and he was a man of power in words and deeds but when he was approaching the age of 40 it entered his mind to visit his brethren the sons of Israel wait a minute now I need y'all to come out of the movie for a minute because 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 most of us in the movie y'all remember the Ten Commandments with Charlton Heston what it was was Moses Moses didn't know that he was an Egyptian they, they made it seem like he discovered it by discovering this cloth <laughs> but there was a there was a difference that you could even see can I can I can I can I tell you something Egyptians ain't light skinned Amen. during this time Egyptians are brother O's complexion Amen. Egyptians are brother Ron and brother Mervyn's complexion y'all follow what they're very dark skinned at this time so when the Hebrews came in there was a visible distinction between them at this time anthropologically we know it but there's a distinction so Moses didn't come in thinking oh I'm an Egyptian Moses knew he was a Hebrew amen so now the Bible says he goes down, or rather, uh, educated and learned, but when he was approaching the age of 40, it entered his mind to visit his brethren, the sons of Israel. And when he saw one of them being treated unjustly, he defended him and took vengeance for the oppressed by striking down the Egyptian. He killed the Egyptian to protect his brother. Amen? <laughs> But follow what the next verse says in verse 25. Verse 25 would say, And he supposed that his brethren understood that God was granting them deliverance through him, but they did not understand. Moses knew who he was growing up in Pharaoh's house. Amen. It was clear to Moses, I, 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 I got to be here for a reason. He thought deliverance for his brethren would come by his hand not just now that statement his hand would mean literally his hand and in the way that he thought it would go he killed an Egyptian so the thought was wait a minute I'm going to deliver my people but the next verse would say on the following day very next day he appeared to them as they it or he appeared to them as they were fighting together and he tried to reconcile them in peace saying men you are brethren why do you injure one another but one uh, but the one who was injuring his neighbor pushed him away saying who made you a ruler and a judge over us you don't mean to kill me as you killed the Egyptian yesterday do you at this remark Moses fled and became an alien in the land of Midian where he became a father of two sons Moses thought that God was granting deliverance to the Hebrews through him. He thought it would happen by verse 24. He says that he defended his brother. He took vengeance for the oppressed by striking down the Egyptian. He thought that this is how I'm going to deliver the people. But when even his brethren said, nah, you going what you going to do? You want to kill us like you killed the Egyptian? Moses said, nope. This must not be the case. And Moses runs. Do y'all follow what I'm saying? Here it is in the text. God brought Moses through 40 years in Egypt. 40 years in the desert on the run from his role. So 40 years in Egypt plus 40 years on the run from his role. He's a shepherd now. Moses thought it wasn't going to happen anymore. Y'all with me? Moses thought it wasn't going to happen. Y'all hear me this morning. Moses thought it wasn't taking place anymore. God had to develop Moses so that Moses would understand that he indeed would be the deliverer, but the deliverance would be by God's hand. Amen. It's not difficult to see that Moses had no issue with being the tool of deliverance when it was happening according to how he thought it was supposed to go down he thought it was supposed to happen by his by his might by his strength by what he wanted to do if we take 
Acts chapter 7 verses 24 and 25 together and you see it together in its context and what you see is that he killed the Egyptian thinking that deliverance would happen by him doing similar things. Amen. Amen. Y'all with me this morning? Mm -hmm. In other words, follow where I'm going with this here. Moses did not doubt himself. He made excuses because Moses doubted God's lead. Tough as that is, ugly as that feels, ugly as that seems, Moses had every reason. He already thought he was the deliverer 40 years ago. Before this point in our text, he thought, well, well it's going to happen by my, when it didn't happen now, talking with God is like, no, it seems like he's doubting himself, but it's more than that. He doesn't believe in God's lead over his life. That's a tough thing. That's a tough thing to do. Amen. That's a tough thing to deal with. If, 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 if Lord Jesus, at every point that he countered the Lord. Moses was making excuses because it didn't work out his way. And perhaps Moses couldn't even see it working out God's way. Amen. The scripture, if we go back for a moment and if we even look at chapter 3 and verse number, uh, 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 what is that, 12, the Bible says, God says, Back in the scripture right now, Exodus 3 and verse 12. And he said, certainly I will be with you. And this shall be the sign to you that it is I who have sent you. When you brought the people out of Israel, out of Egypt, you shall worship God in this mountain. The same mountain he was saying, I need to prove it to you. But the only way to prove it is if you go do what I say. Amen. The only way to prove to you, Moses, that you are precisely who I said you are is for you to do what I say so that when you come back and worship on this mountain, it is solidified in your mind. I knew what I was doing when I sent you. Hmm. Church, sometimes we think, sometimes we walk this journey thinking that we know as much as God does. Amen. How so, preacher? Because God leads you on a path and all of a sudden you find yourself disagreeing with the direction that he's leading you. It's real tough. It's real easy to do though. Because God leads his people. Amen. Even today. But sometimes in, in the leading, God might say, don't go this route. And you're like, but I want to go this route. Nothing ever comes to fruition. It never happens. It never works out. It never works out how you planned. And that other option is there. And it's like, well, why didn't you go? But because sometimes we, I say sometimes, that's wrong. But because we be stubborn, pig-headed. We want to do what we want to do. I'm just talking. But we want to do what we want to do to accomplish what we want to accomplish. And God is saying, follow what I say. It's, it's simple. Follow what I, what I said. Amen. It's, it, look at Christianity, Lord. It's simple. It ain't easy, but it's simple. Follow what God said do. But you know how many times that gets hard? Because of how we, here's the word, feel. Moses felt like, nah, this ain't going to happen. I, I tried that before. It's not going to happen now. I was 40 back then. I was a young man. I'm 80 now. So it could... God had to show him, no, it's not dependent on who you are. Lord, sometimes, Lord, Lord, God many times has to strip us down just so he can build us up. Amen? How else do we accomplish God's will if he doesn't clean us up or clean the mess out first? If he doesn't remove the, the chaff from our lives, if he doesn't remove the foolishness from our lives. Lord Jesus, I've had some friends I'm going to just talk about me. But I've had some friends whom I love dearly. And I knew everything pointing. You can't be friends with this person. And for years held on to the friendship. And it wasn't until something happened and the friend disappeared. And then all of a sudden, things just start moving in a brand new, better, more improved, a thriving direction. And I'm like, well, well why take me this long to do it? Because I was stubborn. I didn't want to listen to God's direction. Amen. 
That's just, that's just the way it is. It is the unfortunate part that happens in this life. Uh, truth be told, church, at, at every point that we think we know more, we end up proving that God knows best. Amen. Amen. At every point we think we know more, God proves he knows what's best. Mm hmm Lord Jesus. It's rough, but it's true. Because what we deal with today is, is, is not even so much Moses leading Israel. What we deal with is God leading Moses. Lord Jesus. He couldn't lead Israelites until he was willing to be led by God. Amen. When God destroyed all of his excuses, he like, all right, I'm, I'm going to go. And he follows him. Yeah, do, 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 you, do, you, do you see? When God eliminated all of his excuses, well, I don't know if I could do this. I'm going to be with you. Well, they might not believe me. You tell them who sent you. Well, 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 I can't talk right. Who made your mouth? Well, I still can't talk right. Your brother could talk. You're going to say it to him. I'm going to give you the words. You're going to give him the words. He's going to tell Pharaoh the words. When you read in the scripture and you see the Bible says that Moses threw down his rod before Pharaoh, it wasn't Moses, it was Aaron. Moses stood there like the Don. He'd raise his hand and Aaron would say, God says, let my people go. And then Aaron would throw down the rod. Moses ain't touching. When it came to turning the water into blood, it wasn't Moses that touched it. Moses sat right there, stood there again. Aaron came up, took the staff and said, every excuse that he came up with, God eliminated it. No doubt by the time they're leaving, <laughs> Moses got to be saying, he wasn't lying. <laughs> it, it wasn't on me. It wasn't working out how I was going to do it. It worked out how God wanted it to happen because it could only happen with God making it happen. Here's the truth, church. And here's one that we got to grasp and understand. If we can't go anywhere, we can't go anywhere without being humble enough to let God lead us. Amen. 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 Anywhere in this world, anywhere in this life, anywhere in anything we seek to do, it cannot happen unless we humble ourselves and let God lead us. Personally. Individually. Lord Jesus, because something... I ain't gonna go there. Yeah, I'm gonna go there. Look here, sometimes congregations can't move forward because one or two, three, one, one, two or three or six people won't let God lead them. Amen. And then all of a sudden you see God stir the pot and folk get gone. And then God say, now move. And everybody moving and it's like, man, we're we, we going somewhere now. Y'all follow what I'm saying. I'm just, I'm just talking. I could, I could tell some stories. I could tell some stories. Look here, Vine Street. I'm going right back to Vine Street, not Overbrook Park. Vine Street. It was a ton of folk causing a lot of trouble who one didn't want to follow God. And a lot of folks said, we're going to follow God. And a lot of folks said, nah, we want to. And all of a sudden, sometimes we say it's coincidence. This person in good health, dead. This person in good health, dead. This person in good health got a better job and left. This person it, it just maimed and they stuck at home. I name them all. I used to serve some of them communion. I'm just telling you that when God is ready to move, amen, the folk who say, God, you lead my life, he'll say, come on then. But for other folk, he'll be like, okay, you ain't moving. I got to kick you out. Amen. Amen. I know that look like goose stepping, but follow what I'm saying. Look here. God don't play no games. When God is leading, he don't look, come with him. Some of us right now could be in a position somewhere in our lives, in one aspect of our lives or in all of our lives, where we might be stuck somewhere wondering what's going to happen next. Here's the truth. You have to ask yourself, am I really letting God lead or am I stubborn somewhere? Because sometimes we could be, why is this happening and we stuck in a particular sin? Amen. Lord Jesus. 
Let me, I didn't, I didn't, yeah, I said it last night to myself and I said, no, I don't say it, but I'm going to say it now. Look here, uh, because I just mentioned that sometimes sin can cause us not to move and we got to follow God's will. You know, I used to make this statement. I actually preached it here. I said, you know, uh, in the hood, you hear this a lot that folk will say, uh, if they're doing wrong and you go to tell them you're doing wrong, they might look at you and say, uh, uh, well, only God can what? Judge me. Only God can judge. Matter of fact, Tupac had that as a song, track number six, on, a, on, on the album All Eyes on Me, disc number one. I'm just trying to tell you. But, but the, the song, it might have been track number nine, but follow what I'm saying. The song was Only God Can Judge Me. And in the hood, you hear it, it's like, okay, well, look, bruh, if somebody lying and you're like, okay, I understand. Look here, bruh, you know, you ain't got to tell a lie. Like, look, only God can judge me. And I realize there's a problem. I used to say only God can judge me. And truth be told, your response needs to be that should terrify you. But... I don't think that's fully correct because the problem with only God can judge me means that God will judge me at the judgment means I got time. God will judge at the judgment, but God already judged a lot of stuff in his word. So imagine God said it in his word. We do wrong. We do wrong. And at the judgment, God say, didn't you get a copy? <laughs> it's like your parents, Lord Jesus. Y'all know y'all been there too, amen. Your parents say, you don't do this, and then you do it, and then you come back later like, why I told you not to, the beating is worse. Amen. <laughs> amen. <laughs> yeah, yeah, some of y'all chuckling, y'all like, yeah. <laughs> some of us can still feel some beatings, flashbacks. Y'all, y'all look here. <laughs> God leads and his lead is best amen i'm reminded of a, of a, of a story as I, as I close a friend of mine a business partner he says to me um he, he well tells the story he said that he was going through an amusement park it might have been disney world or something like that but around five o'clock folk leave tend to leave parks five six when it start to get dark folk, folk leave parks but they don't leave park like right away they leave like in like or rather they don't leave one at a time they leave like almost all together and so what it was was he went out this particular park. Now he's about six foot five. His son is about three feet tall at this time. And so he, he reaches down, he grabs his son's hand, he looks at his son and he says, son, we're going to go through this crowd, but the problem is the whole crowd going this way, his car is over here. So now he has to go and fight through the rest going this way. Y'all follow? So he says to his son, look, you got to hold on tight to my hand. Or you might get lost in the crowd. You might get hurt. The son, three feet tall now, looks and is like, can we wait until everybody else done? Can we wait until later? Why? Because what the son sees is like, nah, I, I can't do that. His father sees and knows more, but he, he just immediately is like, nah, I don't want to do that. So he says, nah, we going. Takes his son by the hand. He says, hold on tight. They go in the crowd. They walk in and then they cut. And he says, as they're cutting, the problem now is as they're cutting, all his son sees is arms, limbs, he sees no light because they nothing. he got through a crowd of people. His father's saying, move this and the other, but he's holding on. And he's holding on, and it's one point that I'd imagine his son stopped because there's so many people, and he's stopping, and he tugs on his father's hand. Let's stop right here. Makes sense. But what the son do? The son do the same thing I do to my son. Come on. And kept dragging him. What the son didn't see, what the son, all the son saw was the crowd. He couldn't see the open, but his father stood taller. His father saw further. His father saw an opening in the crowd. His son thought it would take forever. But the father knew exactly how long it was going to take. So he had a choice, the son did let go and get lost in this crowd and possibly get trampled or hold on even tighter to daddy's hand and keep marching come to the edge of the of the crowd and all of a sudden the son is like we got here pretty fast and he's like i told you you just had to hold on to my hand church how many of us hold on to god's hands but we want to stop in the middle of the storm we want to stop when, we're on, when he's taking us somewhere and say, no, we don't want to go any further. How many of us before he leads us might say, I don't want to go there. But if you just simply trust God's lead in your life, you go further, you get there faster, and you operate cleaner, better. Amen? 
So it only makes sense that in this life, we got to clear some stuff up and we just got to trust God's leadership. Because if anything, God knows best. Amen? Amen. That's, right. Amen. that's my word this morning, church. Because that's, that's really what it is. That, that's the whole summation. Look, you have to just trust God's lead. He sees what we can't see. Amen? He knows what we don't know. He understands what we don't understand. Why? Because he is God. Amen? Amen. We just got to follow his lead because God certainly knows best. Amen? Amen? Listen, if you're here, if you're here, being here, there might be some of us who might be in a particular point in time in our life where the thought is, I'm not following God's lead 100%. I'm not asking you to stand up and tell everybody that. I'm asking you to analyze your own life. Recognize where the fault is and correct it. Amen? Recognize where that fault is and just go with Jesus. Amen? Change it right now. Understand it and say, no, I need, I need to shift this thing. This, this cannot be the same. Amen? Amen? Because it's, it's when we do that, life gets better. Now, mind you, it might be tough. It might be tough. It's not easy. It's simple. Life becomes simpler when you just say, I'm going to follow God's lead. Amen? Amen? And listen, if you're here, not a member of the Lord's church, you've not obeyed the gospel, today is the day. Today is the day to truly follow God's lead. Amen. He said, believe and be baptized. Mark 16, 16, he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. Well, that's simply the gospel, but really it's following his lead. Amen. Christ Jesus died. He was buried and he rose up again. Amen. And in the same way, we bury we get buried in the water the grave of baptism to rise to walk in the newness of life. That's Romans 6. The opportunity is yours. Now, my son calling for water, that's the right thing, son. Amen. Amen. Why don't we stand as we do?